Stay safe online with private internet access. With unlimited data and a ton of encryption and authentication methods, PIA has your VPN needs covered. Check them out at the link below. What's up guys, CP Moddy here back with another video and if you thought the 970 family of SSD drives were pretty fast, well the 970 EVO in particular is pretty affordable whereas the Pro is a little bit more expensive but does offer a little bit more performance, well today things are about to change because we're here with the 970 EVO Plus SSD that has just dropped from Samsung and is an update to the existing line uh, and gives some pretty decent improvements for the NVMe tech that it does pack inside of it. So let's go ahead and have a look. Now Samsung just dropped this drive actually as of yesterday as of recording this video, although a little bit longer as of releasing this video, and is clearly an update to the 970 EVO, hence why it carries the same name basically, except as a plus. And that's where the little tweaks and bits and pieces under the hood definitely do shine here. With a bump in lifespan and a few other tweaks in the performance department with, for example, writes of up to 3.5 gigabytes per second and up to 1.2 terabytes written on the top tier drives, it's not too bad in the performance and longevity department. Now there's also too some other good things in terms of this drive like better hardware encryption and also to slightly better power savings thanks to the fact that it is using slightly different technology here, but it is also too backed up by the usual suspects like a 5 year warranty and some really good components under the hood. Now speaking of under the hood, actually drilling into some of those specifications we are looking at the same Samsung Phoenix controller as last time, which means it's going to favour performance over power consumption, but thanks to the fact that the new NAND flash modules are a little bit power saving, uh, we can expect slightly better power savings here. Moving on, we're also to looking at 512 megs of DRAM on the 250GB model and 500GB model, 1GB on the 1TB and 2 gigs of DRAM on the 2TB model. Now these are LPDDR4 modules, so they're the fastest, they are the nicest, and of course DRAM is right here. Now, um, we won't go into too deep, but essentially DRAM is going to be used not necessarily for a drive cache, rather to store the mapping kind of data that is used to figure out where all the data is on the drive. Now this DRAM is also to use for other features on the drive, but we'll touch on that in sort of a separate video from this one. Today though, we are looking at the 250GB model, and uh, do note there is no pleb spec 120GB model. It starts at 250GB, which I have to say is a good move because we're definitely getting to a point where 120GB drives are literally very, very cheap and really anyone can get into them. 250 is a great place to start. Now the trippy thing here is actually how the paper numbers are actually written. Now when we expect to see read and write numbers on a piece of paper we see read in one column, write on the other. However, this particular SSD uh, features SLC flash as well as your typical TLC flash. So a lot of SSDs out there that we've checked out on the channel, which probably should pop up at some point there, um, all feature one type of memory module, generally speaking MLC or TLC memory flash, whereas this guy has both. So so SLC for your super fast uh, instant drive access and then TLC for a bit more of your mass storage right here. Now this is where it acts as kind of like a cache with our SLC acting as the super fast bit that everything just gets written to and then the TLC is sort of your bit more bigger storage. And this is all managed on the actual SSD itself and nothing you have to actually worry about yourself but it's something I do really like. Now unfortunately we don't actually have dedicated numbers so we're not exactly sure what kind of sizes that SLC chipset is and unfortunately I didn't get enough time to actually rip into this drive and really find out some more uh, detailed specs but it is really interesting to see two different type of memory modules on there that do two different things. However I did notice at over about 50% fill so that 60, 70, 80% fill that SLC cache does start to slow down as it starts to use that SLC uh, to store data on there but uh, all in all if you are keeping your drive at a reasonable fill rate it's going to be extremely fast for a very long time. Oh and also to the biggest change actually comes in the form of the NAND flash being going from 64 layer NAND flash all the way up to 96 layer NAND flash. Now what does this really mean for you as the end user? Well it means a couple things for instance as I did mention it means lower power consumption and better performance but also to all round things like better lifespan, better durability and all in all is just a better update to what we were running with 64 layer uh, 3D NAND flash. Now don't get me wrong 64 layer is still good but hey 96 is even better. Uh, 
in terms of the design department. We'll take a quick look here. It does have the same matte black PCB, same size, really same everything in terms of the design department, which is not a bad thing. I definitely do like the uh, Samsung SSD lineup, especially if they're going in some sort of SSD kind of adapter or dock or somewhere being mounted visible. They look pretty clean, they look pretty tidy, and I have to give Samsung a thumbs up from me. Now, normally at this point, we'll go ahead and actually rip into this guy and check under the hood but I can't because I don't actually own this drive and I need to give it back in one working order but also two exactly how I got it so I can't actually go pulling stickers off but thanks to the guys over at Nanantech for taking photos of this guy without any stickers on it so we can get a bit of a look of the idea. We can see our two memory modules right here most likely one being SLC one being our TLC they do have different part numbers so kind of gives it away right there. Our DRAM and also to the controller itself again the controller is exactly the same as what we've had before it's just more of the NAND side that is getting a little bit of an upgrade right here and well I guess seeing that we can't rip into it ourselves let's jump into the performance department and going straight into Crystal Disk Mark we get some seriously solid numbers with 2.5 gigabytes per second by 2.3 gigabytes per second on the reads and writes respectively I'm definitely not unhappy at all 2.5 gigabytes per second is absolutely crazy uh, when writing to these drives jumping into some real world numbers we found that uh, game load times were perfectly great for this kind of an SSD obviously faster than well just about anything else we've tested other than maybe a RAM disk and also to the actual FPS itself wasn't affected with no lag or stuttering introduced when playing these games. Looking at our drive leaderboard, well, as I did mention, the only thing that it really loses out to is maybe a RAM disk, but really, there's very little that actually even comes close that we've tested out so far, and I really love to see uh, the 970 EVO Plus really coming into its own. Rounding out our test right here, looking at our dodginess, graph it does show a 1 out of 10, obviously being the least dodgiest drive that we've actually checked out, one being super not dodgy and 10 being the most dodgiest thing we've ever checked out. Uh, obviously being made by Samsung, it's in excellent uh, components and also to excellent support. Samsung's a company that's not going anywhere anytime soon, so I have no problems recommending and also to buying this drive for myself. Which brings us to the question of should you buy one and the answer is obviously without a doubt an absolute yes. Now, at the time of recording, we're actually expecting to see these SSDs come out at the same price as the existing 970 EVO, which makes literally no sense to buy the EVO anymore, and if you just did, you're probably punching yourself in the face because, uh, it's a little bit of a bummer that you bought a drive and now you've got something that could have been a lot cheaper. Maybe try and get your refund back on that. But either way, uh, the 970 EVO Plus is definitely something that gets a big thumbs up and a big recommendation from me because it's coming out the same price as the old one. There's not really that much point in buying the old one. Now, that being said, if the old one gets a wicked price cut, then we can start talking. If you don't want to spend as much but still get great performance, then 970 EVO, but spend a little bit more and get the plus. Uh, that's kind of an argument we'll have to wait and see what Samsung actually does, or maybe Samsung will just cancel off the 970 EVO, we're not exactly sure at the time of recording. Maybe by the time this video releases it'll be updated and we actually know what's going on, but uh, all in all, it is an absolute no-brainer. If you're looking at this drive, just get it, because it's way better than the Pro, or rather better than the EVO, and comes in nicely with the Pro alongside of it. And that brings us to the TLDW part of the video. The new 970 EVO Plus is, well, just like the name suggests, it's much like the 970 EVO, plus a few extra little goodies right here. With the biggest change really coming down to that NAND flash offering 96 layer 3D NAND flash for better performance, better data density, lower power consumption, and all in all better performance. The key parts like controllers and PCBs are all the same as the old model, but honestly that's not really something that was really a bad thing at all. With very reasonable gains in terms of the reads and also to writes numbers, we see that the new EVO Plus is very solid in both the synthetics world but also to the real world file transfer and real world gaming world. The price point is also to a really good deal coming in at exactly the same price as the existing 970 EVO, making it an absolute no-brainer to buy this guy over the older 970 EVO. Though that being said, if the EVO gets a price tag, we may need to uh, readdress this type of question. But 
do note, it is a really good drive and I'll leave it linked down in that description box as soon as they do become available, or if this video's out and they are available, then I'll leave them linked down below. Um, but let me know down in that comment section, would you like to see Samsung do the same thing, but to the Pro model? I would love to see a 970 Pro Plus and get the same sort of gains that we saw from the Evo to the Evo Plus on the Pro side. I think that's gonna be really, really cool. But do let me know what you think down in that comment section. Guys, thanks all for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one. Wow.